Well, God bless you. Listen, I am so honored and delighted that you chose to turn this way. My goodness, God is such a wonderful, such a marvelous Savior, has done so many marvelous things. Listen, I'm a person that's in love with the Word of God. I thank God for the Word. The Word is inspiration, aspiration, give us new observation, help us look with new calculations. And listen, God can do so many marvelous things when we spend time in the Word of God. I want to share with you a message that I preach that I stayed with the Word. And I thank God for the Word, for it is the Word that changes us. It is the Word that makes us better. It is the Word that helps develop and grow us. I want you to hear this message. I think it will be a blessing for you. Let's listen. You said, Preacher, you talking about saints. No, you talking about sinners. Saints commit sin. You're not exempt from sin because you're saved. I run into people all the time. They're talking about, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm living above sin. Took me a long time to figure out how you can live above sin. I found out how you can do it. You have to stay in at least a two-story apartment. And the people underneath you ain't going to church. That's the only way you're going to live above sin. Talk to me, somebody. Because as long as you're in this life, you're going to be confronted with some kind of sin. And saints do sin. David tells us that in Psalms 51. He tell you what happened when saints sin. He says the first thing happened is that sin, it stained your conscience. He said, because I need to be washed. Y'all don't hear me in this house. But he says sin, not only does it stain your conscience, he said, sin sicken your body. He said, because my bones are broken. He said, sin will sadden your heart. He said, because my joy is gone. He said, sin will seal your lips. He said, because I stopped teaching transgressors. A lot of folks shout now, Ain't because ain't nothing going on in service. Don't shout. No, it ain't because ain't nothing going on. It's because sin got you weighted down. And it's hard to shout when you're caught up in your own sin. Brethren, if a man be overtaken, you all are here, aren't you? How can I keep from being overtaken? You ask so many Good questions. You see, we have three enemies we have to deal with daily. The external enemy, the world. The internal enemy, the flesh. And the infernal enemy, the devil. And all three work on us. Epistle of John said, love not the world. Philip said, don't let the world squeeze you in its mold. In other words, the world tell you, hate folk that hate you. You ain't saying nothing. The world tell you, get all you can. Can all you get. Sit on the can and poison the rest. The world tell you, you manage it with a financial yardstick. Big money, big man. Little money, little man. No money, no man. Somebody ought to help me this. The world said, based upon your position as to who you are, talk to me something. People measure folk by your status. That's what the world say. The flesh is another enemy. I'm looking at somebody here now. You bogged down in debt and you ought not to be. Because you spend money on stuff you didn't need. Trying to impress folk 
you didn't like and spend money you didn't even have. It's because we're trying to satisfy the flesh. Pastor went to one of his members' house for dinner and he said at the table, so honey, I'm full all the way up to the neck. Remember, so I'm sorry, Pastor. I had some chitlins I fixed for you, and you were not even able to eat them. He said, what do you think I saved the neck for? <laughs> we never satisfied. You leave a car lot, just bought a sprint brand new car. And on the way to the house, you see another one. So, boy, why I didn't get this one? You leave wedding, just marched down the aisle and got married. And while you're sitting in the wedding, get you spot somebody. You say, so, oh, my goodness, I made a mistake. I'm doing this too soon. Flesh ain't never satisfied that's what the Lord said you must learn how to deny yourself because everything we do got self written on it we shop for self talk we eat for self we sleep for self we work for self but self is one of your great enemies the Lord said if you're gonna follow me you must deny yourself. The world is our enemy. The flesh is our enemy. But the devil is our enemy. One thing the devil always do, he's trying to make you believe he does not exist. If he can convince you that there is no devil, he already got an upper hand on you. He always say nothing in this house. And he got so many names that you don't know which way he's coming. He's called the serpent. He's called Satan. He's called Lucifer. He's called the devil. He's called the prince of the power of the air. He's called a thief. He's called a murderer. He's called a dragon. He's called accuser of the brethren. Preach from Ray. He got so many different names. You don't know which way he's coming. And he always know how to get you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, I mean, you ain't got to go far. You can start in Genesis. In Genesis 3, 1, watch what the devil did. The Bible said, and the serpent said unto the woman. You say, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Well, here it is. You see, the devil approached the woman with her emotions. He approached the man. He, he, she, he approached the woman with her reason. He approached the man with his emotions. You see, woman make decisions based upon her reasons, how she feel. Man make decisions based upon emotions, on reason, what he sees. She make hers upon how she feel. And the devil switched it. He dealt with Eve with her reasons. He dealt with Adam with his emotions. When y'all look at me that way strange, I have to take a few moments because y'all be saying he's a showmanist. Let me see if I can show you another way. When I was young, coming, going to school and be walking with little girls down uh, the road, girls would always take their books and hold them in their chest while they was walking down the road. She's feeling what she's carrying. Man would walk down, boys with his books on his side swinging them. <laughs> that ain't enough. Man get ready to kiss his wife. He kisses her with his eyes wide open. He want to see. <laughs> when he start to the woman, when she head toward his lip, she closes her eyes. Because she want to feel. He get ready to go to bed with his wife. He go to bed with all the lights on.
But when she get ready to go to bed with him, first thing she do is say, baby, turn off the lights. I told you, I know how to get y'all off of me. She make decisions based upon how she feel. He make decisions based upon what he see. Man get ready to buy a suit, he call ahead to the store. So you have a brown suit, 46 long. He walk in, 10 minutes, he got the suit gone. <laughs> Yo ain't saying nothing. Woman go window shopping. And she got to try on every dress. And got to feel it, walk around in the store, switching it and standing up in chairs. Because she want to feel what she's doing. The devil knew if he switches it and gets you out of your comfort zone, he got you where he wants you. Ephesians 6 and 11, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wise. The Greek word is methodia. It's where we get our English word method, which means Satan come with his methods. He come organized. He used the same trick bags in Genesis he used right now. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He has not changed it since Genesis. You know why he hasn't changed it? It's still working. Lust of the eye says see something. The lust of the flesh said get something. The pride of life said be something. Second Corinthians 2 Corinthians 2.11 Be not ignorant of Satan's device. The Greek word is noema. When you get the word noeo, when you get the root word noose, which means mine. The devil liked to play with your mind. And can I tell you, you win or lose in your mind. If you don't think you can make it, honey, you can't make it. If you think you are defeated, you are defeated. If you think somebody talking about you, I don't care how they tell you they ain't, you ain't gonna hear nothing because your mind said they are. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's in your mind. Devil know if he gets you in the mind, he got you where he wants you to be. The devil also know that you're running for the Lord. But he also know that if he can discourage you, you're already defeated. His greatest tool it's a tool of discouragement. The devil tell you, don't nobody like you. And you start having pity parties with yourself. But can I throw this in free? Don't care who don't like you, just make sure you like them. Don't let what other folk think mess you up. Never let people park on your brains and they're not paying any rent. You have to write them an eviction notice. Say, honey, you can't park here. Know who you are and know whose you are. The devil love to play mind games. The text said, brethren, if a man be overtaken. No, subject to move, but it's in our tenth which means it's a snapshot. In other words, he's not giving you the whole picture, just a preview of what's going to happen. But it's in passive voice. Passive voice means this, the subject is being acted upon. In other words, when you got all those forces coming against you, it ain't hard for you to fall. Because don't fool yourself. When you leave the devil and come to the Lord, the devil is still mad. You always saying nothing. The devil don't appreciate you switching masters. Don't think the devil going to pat you on the back and say, good fella, man, God bless you. No, no, he going to do everything he can to try to get you down. And he wait until you're vulnerable. Here is how he do that. He watch you in church. 
you should be sitting on the front. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He watched when you start backing some seats up. <laughs> so uh, they, the devil knows there's something going on with you. He wait until you get to the back seats. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Then he go home with you. And notice you used to get on your knees and pray before you went to bed. Now you just jump up in the bed. <laughs> used to be a faithful choir member. Now you know, hung your robe up and you criticize everybody else to sing it. <laughs> devil said, uh-huh. Notice you used to listen to the sermon. Now you play with your cell phone when the sermon's going. Devil said, uh-huh. Then he launches his great attack on you because he knows you ain't got enough strength to fight back. Your faith grip start loosening up. <laughs> Am I doing all right, y'all? Because can I tell you, you ain't going to have no faith if you ain't got no word. <laughs> Romans 10, 17 says, Faith, come by hearing. And hearing come through by the word of God. The devil wait until you get weak. And he launches his great attack. And then he starts using you as an agent. You start criticizing the church. Start criticizing people that go to church. You know why? Because misery, it loves company. Hurting people hurt people. <laughs> he said, brethren, if a man be over, Taken in a fault. Watch what it says. Ye which are spiritual. Notice. He did not say ye which are preachers. Notice. He did not say ye which are deacons. Notice. He did not say ye which are missionaries. Are ye which are Sunday school teachers? He said, but ye which are spiritual. Let me tell you why. Preachers ought to be spiritual, but all are made. Deacons should be spiritual, but all of them are not. Missionaries ought to be spiritual, but many of them are not. You see, if you ain't never done nothing wrong, you don't know how to forgive folk. I don't like being around people ain't got no dirt on them. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I want to hang around people got a little dirt on them because they understand how to deal with dirty situations. Pastor, had some of his deacon, they were going to talk to a brother that had made a terrible mistake. And he asked all the deacons, said, brethren, would any one of you all have done that? All of them said, all but one said, oh, no, sir, you'll never catch me doing that. Asked one deacon, he was trying to figure out what deacon he was going to take with and wasn't going to take but one. He asked another deacon, other deacon said, I ain't sure, reverend. If I was in the same shape he's in, I don't know what I'd do. He said, I want you to go with me. I wish y'all would see how y'all look at that man. You see, if you've been holy all your life, you don't know how to relate to somebody that has fallen. And sometimes real holy folk don't know how to forgive people. You holy at 60, but the Lord remember when you were 16. <laughs> Y'all don't like that. Thank God for where you are. And sometimes you ain't holy, you're just sick. It ain't because you ain't. <laughs> it's because you can't.
I told you these three deacons got up doing a testimony service, testifying about how good God was and what God had done to him. One man got up, said, I want to thank the Lord. I don't run the street no more. Another man got up, said, I want to thank the Lord. I don't look at women no more. Third man got up, said, I want to thank the Lord. I don't drink no more. Pastor got up behind him and said, God bless y'all, brother. That's so wonderful. He said, but Brother Thomas, Reed, you don't run the street no more. You're in a wheelchair. <laughs> said, Brother Smith, Reed, you ain't looking at women no more. You're blind. Said, Brother James, the reason you ain't drinking no more, you got cirrhosis of the liver. Said, y'all ain't holy. Said, y'all sick. He said, Ye which are spiritual. Now watch in verse 6, chapter 6, he says, spiritual. But then, Lord, in chapter 5, verse 22, he give you how to be spiritual. He said, the fruit of the spirit is love. Lord, in other words, you got to have a special love, Lord, to help a brother that has fallen. Lord, you got to have a special love for God. Because whenever you see a brother that's stumbling along the way, if you got good sense, you'll say, without the grace of God. There go I. And let me just throw this in for free before I go on and leave. Stop trying to explain to people when you have messed up. Stop trying to convince them what you did. You see, your friends don't need an explanation. And your enemies don't deserve one. I'm preaching, y'all just ain't saying nothing. Yeah. He said, ye which are spiritual. Lord, he said, a spiritual person, uh, they have the fruit of the spirit. And one is that of love. Shout love one time. Love, if it's a song, you ought to sing it. Love, if it's a bell, you ought to ring it. Love, if it's advice, you ought to heed it. Love, if it's a race, you ought to go on and run it. If love is advice, then you ought to heed it. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 13, said love suffers long. <laughs> Have I got a witness? It said love is kind. It said, love is patient. And watch what it said. Love, think it no evil. Love, believe it no evil. Love does not behave itself unseemingly. Shake hands with somebody just for a moment. This is just a break. And, and ask them, said, do you really love me? I wish I had some help in this house. Uh, yeah, shake hands on the other side. Some of y'all didn't move. Uh, I need lightning to strike y'all. <laughs> shake hands on the other hand. Say, neighbor, I need to know, uh, do you have love in your heart uh, for your fellow man? Do I have a witness? He said, ye which are spiritual watch what it says restore the word restore comes from the word meaning to men here it is it's like a man breaking his arm when he breaks his arm he don't cut the arm off no no he mend the arm back together Learn. when a brother or sister fall in the body of Christ. You know, cut them off from the family. Have I got any hip in this house? You bring them back in the fold. 
Somebody ought to talk to me, somebody. You don't point to them and talk about how wrong they've been, how many mistakes they made. They already know that. You ain't got to convince them of the sins they committed. That sin haunt them every day of their lives. But when you got your bed size, well, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this message as well as I did preaching. There are some sermons that I just enjoy preaching. And this is one of those messages that I enjoyed, that the Lord allowed me to share this message, and I thank God for it. I want you to have a copy of this message. This is another keepsake. I want you to have this message. You can get it not just for yourself, but you have some friends that need to hear this. Get it, send it to them. Let it be a blessing for them. They will cherish the sermon. They will cherish you and appreciate you for putting this in their hands. Get this message. You can call 1-800-375-4007 or write to God is Good Ministry, uh, 2237 South Parkway, East Memphis, Tennessee, zip 3811. Four, or go to godisgoodministry.net and we will be sure to get this message right back to you. It's a keepsake. You want to have this message to share with your friends, your family, your well wishers. And then I love for you, if you think well ever to partner with the Salem, the God is Good Ministry, I want you to be a partner with us. Help us share the gospel, spread it across the nation, across the globe. If it has blessed you, I think it will bless somebody else. You can share with us by sending whatever donation you would love to send, five, 10, 20, $100, $1,000, whatever you're led to do. Don't procrastinate. Don't say, I'm gonna do it tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. Sit down right now, write a check out right now and send it to God is good ministry. You say, I hear people across the globe, across the nation, so they enjoy the telecast, enjoy hearing it. Well, it's not free. It costs something to go into the airways to share the gospel. You can help get it where it needs to go. Do that for us right now. Thank you so much. And remember this, God is good. You got it all the time.